Good morning everyone, here is our latest video update on Typhoon Naguri or uh, Bagyong Florita as it's known in the Philippines on this Monday morning, July 7th, 2014 as we continue to watch this powerful monster barrel towards the Japanese islands moving ever closer to the island of Okinawa it was last located approximately 740 kilometers south of the island of Okinawa or about 900 kilometers southeast of Taipei, uh, Taiwan. Maximum sustained winds according to the latest JMA analysis are now at 175 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 250 kilometers per hour. The system has indeed intensified overnight and uh, looking also on the numbers in parentheses there, um, that's the analysis from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center again using slightly higher wind speeds uh, due to differing uh, standards that the two agencies are using. But uh, for the JTWC, uh, they have actually put the Super Typhoon designation now. Again, uh, the JMA being the official agency doesn't use that uh, category, only the Joint Typhoon Warning Center does. but. Uh, again, the JTWC now putting the wind speeds at 240 to 295 kilometers per hour. Uh, it's still a Category 4, um, but uh, the agency uh, mentioned uh, JTWC say, uh, forecasting um, Nogui to uh, still attain that Category 5 uh, over the next uh, 24 hours. The system has also started moving more to the northwest. It was moving west-northwestward over the past 12 to 24 hours, but it has begun to move on a more northwesterly direction at a speed of 25 kilometers per hour. Again, still, still being steered by that uh, subtropical ridge uh, across the Pacific. And uh, again, the system is turning as expected um, and will start turning more to the north. Uh, over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours. Going back to the infrared satellite loop here again you can see that eye has really cleared out become very symmetrical uh, overnight and again prompting the agencies to increase the wind speeds a little bit more um, and you can also see that convection is still looking pretty strong surrounding that eye. However we have noticed warming in the convection you can see the red the, the ring of red colors there the northwestern side has uh, some sort of seems to be warming um, we, we still don't know if that is a, uh, a trend a weakening trend uh, hopefully it is um, but still uh, the system looking pretty massive and uh, looking pretty downright powerful as it approaches the Japanese island. The further analysis here we have one of the mi latest microwave images uh, taken this morning. Again, one of those uh, instruments that we use to peek inside uh, the cloud canopy looking more into the core and what is really going on inside the system. And as you can see, we have a ring here. That is the inner eye wall, the core of Naguri, looking pretty strong and pretty healthy at the moment. Uh, but we are also starting to see uh, some sort of an outer eye wall forming, which could, uh, if, if it forms soon enough, it could induce an eye wall replacement cycle and could even uh, halt intensification and could even induce some weakening just before it approaches the island of Oak, uh, not approach the island, but move just west. Of the and what this image also shows us, uh, not really directly, but if you infer, there is some dry air to the north and northwest of the system. The lighter blue colors that you see there hint uh, are hinting uh, some dry air um, north of the system. And once it, once Nagui ingests that dry air, once it gets into the circulation, it could disrupt the core. Which is partly good news because that could weaken the storm um, just before it reaches the island. Uh, with that said though, we are still pretty much expecting a powerful and certainly dangerous typhoon that should not uh, be taken lightly by anyone living in uh, these islands. Now okay, so what are the impacts that we are expecting here? Now looking at the track from one of the computer models, this is the hurricane weather research forecast model and it's showing you the wind swath of Nogui and you can pretty much tell the track of the typhoon here and the island of Okinawa is right 
over there and if you look at the color scale to your right this is in knots and 64 to 83 corresponds to somewhere around 120 to 150 kilometers per hour so about category 1 category 2 typhoon strength and uh, the, Yalkana the the island of Okinawa being on the west on the eastern side of the circulation will experience some of the strongest winds uh, from Niguri uh, but with the eye moving say 100 to 150 kilometers per hour I mean I'm sorry 100 to 150 kilometers west of the island Okinawa should be spared from uh, the uh, 250 kilometer per hour or more winds um, because those strongest winds are usually found within 50 kilometers of the eye so a pretty tight core um, from the system and, but that doesn't mean again as I've been saying we should not take this storm very lightly uh, it's still a pretty powerful and dangerous system and not only the wind but also some heavy rainfall we're expecting to fall from the, from the GUI this is one of another model we're using the Coamps model and it's showing you the four day total rainfall from this typhoon and again you can make out the track here the island of Okinawa is right around here the rest of the Ryukyu Islands and Miyakojima and Ishigaki Islands right over there the green shadings you can see here on the right correspond to about 500 millimeters of rainfall so pretty heavy rainfall being forecast from this model and not only the islands but even mainland Japan will see their share of heavy rains from this typhoon as it approaches uh, Kyushu, Shikoku and western Honshu by Thursday in into Friday also expecting 200 to maybe as much as 400 millimeters in that region by late next week I'm sorry by late this week and into the weekend so uh, pretty rough weather across the region from this typhoon and finally, we're looking at the uh, forecasts from uh, the weather agencies. First, we have the Joint Typhoon Warning Center taking, again, Noguri on a northwesterly track, uh, expected to turn more northerly by tomorrow morning, Tuesday, as it nears uh, the islands of Miyakojima and Okinawa. And uh, also, the agency is still expecting Noguri to attain Category 5 intensity, not so sure about that looking at the latest trends but uh, again still a powerful typhoon it should not be taken lightly and uh, as you can see also once you move forward into the week Joint Typhoon Warning Center expecting Nagui to uh, make landfall in the island of Kyushu by early, uh, by early Thursday morning and then continue on a northeasterly direction Again, affecting much of uh, mainland Japan by that. And finally, we have the Japan Meteorological Agency, again, showing a pretty much similar track. Uh, again, uh, the agencies in the region are uh, in very good agreement as to the track of the storm taking uh, Noguri west of Okinawa. There is a small island actually here, Komejima, and that is an inhabited island get some uh, people living there and even an airport there um, and uh, we expect that island to really experience the strongest winds they will be the closest uh, place inhabited place to the eye uh, the projected path of the eye of Naguri and so we're expecting those powerful category 4 maybe even category 5 winds to lash out the island Okinawa being a little bit further away from the eye still expecting about uh, the uh, typhoon force category 1 maybe even up to category 3 uh, typhoon strength now as far as timing goes we are expecting uh, the uh, eye to pass uh, west of Okinawa beginning say noontime on Tuesday with the strongest winds possibly being felt around 1 p.m. to maybe around uh, 6 p.m. Uh, Japan local time Strong winds will last throughout the night on Tuesday and even into Wednesday morning because of the huge circulation of the storm. The rainfall may not even stop until we move into uh, Thursday and that's when the system is forecast to make landfall into Kyushu. Another focus also uh, before, uh, before moving northward is the island of Miyakojima. They will be on the western side of the circulation so not as strong but still uh, very move, being very close to the eye, we are expecting that island to really get hammered 
by this typhoon as well. But that concludes our video update on this Monday morning. Thank you for watching. As always, refer to the official forecasts and warnings from your local authorities. Do not rely on this forecast for life or death uh, decisions. But as always, we will continue to keep you updated and posted with the progress of the system. If you haven't done so, if you are living in Okinawa and the nearby islands, if you haven't done so, please prepare now, stock up on food and water, and just ride the storm out. If once it once once the wind starts uh, once the wind start increasing and the winds start howling again, do not please do not go out. And um, again, we're expecting the worst to to be felt uh, sometime around Tuesday noon time and into the evening hours. So expect the weather to start uh, clearing out by Wednesday evening into Thursday morning for the islands out in this region. Uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, thank you for watching. Stay safe and see you in our next update.